either 50 50 like sometimes you'll be good at them and you'll win and do well and sometimes you'll cheese people and win and sometimes you'll grief so Minions have spawned. i have not fast food in years feels good congrats man i'm proud of you it's hard to it's hard to decline the whoppers and big macs of the world they're just so easy to nibble on in general, I'm a big fan of celerity as well on Vlad, honestly. The more I played it, the more I kind of appreciated it. I feel like it makes sense. Movement speed early game is more meaningful than scaling with CDR later. Uh, especially in top lane. Mid lane is not, as, not the same, but in top lane it's really nice. Space out better and stuff. I'll queue once here because um, I want to stack it anyway. But um, basically, when you play this build, you just auto-attack people. That's all you do. I didn't drop the aggro there, so... He'll get the CS those creeps, which is a bit of a mistake on my end, that I took some more creep damage than I needed to. Damn, I didn't get two autos in there, I always should. My blood is pretty rusty, guys. Give me, give, give me a second here to get used to it again. In general, though, this is pretty much what's going to happen this matchup, is I'm going to slow push waves and he's going to ignore me and press Q on the wave, or he's going to get strong enough where he just chains body slams into my forehead and just all ends me. And then he also beats me, so. All in all, like I said, the matchup isn't the greatest, but I'm, like, happy picking it because I wanted to get a Vlad game in. That is indeed how it goes. Body slams runs away. And then you press Q and sustain up to the best of your abilities. I'm not sure if I can crash this next wave. We'll have to see. It may have been too greedy. V goes bottom side, so I definitely don't worry about that. Maybe I popped my pop, pop a bit too early, but progress is deceptively strong early game. Mm -hmm. Whenever he wastes Q, I can walk up and look for something, but otherwise I'm just scaling. I'm gonna Q here because I can't deny him the CS without him pressing Q on me, so I'm just gonna focus on farming. Taping that creep because I want to Q it because he's not gonna walk up into me. Lucky you missed that Q. Uh, usually you don't want to pull the, the body slam because um, you, you take about as much damage as he does if you can avoid it, but uh, sometimes you obviously get low enough that you start having to do it. Mm -hmm. I can tell by the CS, he's like, the way he's CSing that he's actively looking to set something up for his jungle. Like, he's thinking about it. So I'm going to recall here. I'm just gonna take a safe recall here. I know it sucks that giving him a freeze, but I don't see why I'd walk into enemy jungle and die here. Um, when I will lose even more if I do that, so. I'll go Night Harvester here just for more power. I don't think I'm gonna go cooldown reduction. I don't think it matters as much as winning the trades when he body slams forward. Like, doing as much damage as I can in general. Having extra health is nice as well for the same reason. So I'm just gonna go Night Harvester. Oh, oh, oh. Torker, thanks for the prime sub. I appreciate that. Obviously, like, I think Fiendish plus refillable is not bad, but I think with the wave being frozen still, I want combat power as well. I need some assistance here. He'll have to come topside. If he doesn't skip camps here to help me topside, then he's leaving me out to dry, and that's just a tough situation. I'm not sure how I'd play it then. Probably just try to ward here like I am right now, and then play from there, but still. We could dive this guy uh, in his current health state. But I think he might hit 6 here, so I think I called it too late. Yeah, I believe he hit 6 here, if I'm not mistaken. I still can, though, because I'm going to hit 6 off this big wave as well, if I'm not mistaken. But he'd need to cancel his recall, and he didn't. The reason why we can die is because my champion's just especially good at it. I can just tank the tower until I'm 1 HP and then just pull. Um. Rest in pieces, yes. Mm-hmm.
He doesn't have enough damage to flush on me there. Wonderful. Tried to cancel his base there, but didn't make it. That sucks. You can extend your uh, Vladimir empowered Q by holding E. Neat trick you can use. Nice, she's giving me the big Qs there, which is really big for this matchup. In general, Vladimir doesn't mind staying on low HP. Um, obviously, like, my ult was wasted, which sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Once you start getting some Q cooldown, it's, like, pretty comfortable just mash Q on the wave. But yeah, I'm still in a pretty bad spot. I, I didn't get a timing from Lee Sin to help me fix the wave. Well, I, I, I overstayed trying to push that one wave too, to be fair, but I'm down experience because I um, I respected and I couldn't punish the Gragas due to uh, Lee Sin not wanting to dive top, which is fine. Just kind of sucks for me because he was dead as a doormat there. No counter play. Either way, if I can just keep stacking my call, I'm a happy panda, so I'm not too worried. And he's not really pressing at all. Like, if he pressured me, I'd feel a lot worse about it. But right now, he's very merciful. Very, very, very merciful. Like, he could have been playing like this the entire time, and that's, like, pretty rough to deal with. That's a lot of autos there, my bad. You want to auto-attack a lot when people push into you? Because, I mean, when you have call, because, you know, I have call. So it heals me three, he three health every time I auto. That's up. Neat trick that I get to show you here. Uh, if walking up to the wave is a bit scary, what you can do is you can just go in fog here and then press Q on a jungle camp. That can be ground floor thingy. And it heals you for the full health instead of the minion uh, thingy. The minion tax you pay. Either way, this is what will happen in this matchup. But the reason why I picked it anyway is because one, I just wanted to get a blood game in. And two, um... Nice to play it from the other side. I think if he pushes into me like this, though, it's really bad. You should just freeze waves and walk behind. Like, you should freeze the wave, walk behind it, like, annoy me, try to harass me, etc. What he should be playing for, in my opinion. Much better use of his time than whatever the fuck he's trying to do right now. I pulled there because I panicked a bit, honestly. Same idea. Every time you have the thing when there's nothing to queue, you can just run to the golems. I won't make it though. That's okay. Not the end of the world. You can still queue them for full healing. Uh, even when there's no minion wave. Like, even like this, and just kite them out. And that way you're cycling queues when you're getting pushed in. Another reason why him pushing in like this is, like, really comfortable for me. Is every time I get low enough to potentially get threatened, uh, I can just go dip. I'm gonna go queue this here. Even if I'm not getting empowered queues, it's still worthwhile. Also, you can use your E to extend it once you have enough CDR, so keep that in mind as well. <laughs> not letting the wave crash means um, I get to take it a little bit faster than I normally would. And maybe I can squeeze in. Uh, I'm gonna squeeze in some pressure here. Okay, well, this guy's fighting me. I was hoping my Lee Sin would queue him, like, he would queue and then W, you know? Then we trade one for one there. In general, I was hoping my Lee Sin was looking at all top lane, but he didn't really give a shit. He just kept pushing the crab down here, and he wasn't even looking to try and punish this guy, so that's my bad. I, I think I should play as if my jungler is not looking at my screen, or looking at my lane, because he hasn't been this game. Which sucks, but I could have just been farming underneath my tower. I started playing the game against him, and I shouldn't have. That's my bad. I can just keep farming. Oh, the Jinx gank. Wow. The Trumpers came out of nowhere. A lot of can proxy. Just, he'll die if he does it because it cost him a lot of HP early game. Because um, he heals less from the wave than the max health cost costs him. Because he doesn't have enough AP yet. That's how it works. I'm running, but I have no tools. I'm playing Vladimir with no shoes, bro. 
I'm not sure what we're hoping for here. Just a really shit play, I'm not gonna lie. That doesn't help me at all, you know? Like, does nothing for me. And Beagle's here, so I can't even profit. Oh, man. Come on, he's not trying to kill me. Crazy. But yeah, that doesn't help me at all. Mm -mm. I don't know why he didn't just uh, base out. Like, I mean, he, him hovering and stuff, like, it's, it doesn't matter. After I die, the mistake's been made, you know? Like, fine. I can just scale. No need to stress about it. I'm fine in the game because I uh, went to call Vladimir anyway, so like in terms of money, I'm doing totally fine. Obviously, I'm down a lot of experience now instead of a little bit, but like I said, I needed him to come and push out that one wave, not like... like I, He needed to actively come top and dive this guy when he was 1 HP. I'm playing Vladimir with Ignite and Ultimate. The guy's just a free kill because, like I said, I can just tank the tower. He dies and, like, basically, I'll put Gragas to 25% health and all he needs to do is press auto E auto twice and he's dead. If he hits Q, he's guaranteed dead. That's what I needed. If he doesn't, if he didn't see that, then unfortunately he can't really help me much after the, the fact. And he just needs, we just need to cut our losses after I died there because I tried to bait something. I'll just keep doing these to see if he pushes. As soon as he starts pushing, I'll stop doing them. All right, nice. And like I said, the Gragas is fine, just feeding me farm. So. What I meant with uh, the E extending the Q duration. He's getting angry and he's gonna stop me from healing here, so... I get to chunk him a bit. And we do it anyway. Honestly, it's not a bad idea to pink this bush as well if you want to be really annoying about it. And like I said, once you get enough CDR, you can get multiple Qs in like this, and you just... It's like a health pack in, like, in a shooter, you know? Uh, again, I extended my Q duration, or Q buff duration that way. I didn't get that CS because I held it too long, actually. My bad. But these are the tricks you use to extend your laning phases, Vladimir. There's not much to it. I mean, obviously, when you have to walk up and actually fight, it's so much harder. That's why when he pushes waves, it looks like I'm just farming and my champ is OP because I get to farm for free. But anyone that has some experience against these type of champions will just... Stop doing that. To be fair, I should also hold the wave there, and I should just keep queuing it. I, uh, what I did was wrong. But that's what you should be doing. And there's not much else you can do, uh, in matchups like this. Because you're not strong enough to just fight. No recall here, by my items. Uh, and then once you hit death cap, you start killing everything on your screen. And, uh, that is the Vladimir way. So yeah, he is a bit boring, but once you get AP, he starts getting really fun, so it, it like picks up, you know? So I'm gonna pro the build into Death Cap, uh, and then I'll grab Sorox whenever I can into Void Staff, and that'll be my build. Nothing special. Bit of a blunder by me dying there. I could have just been happy with the status quo, you know? Farming every creep. Instead, we ended up both dying. Pretty big blunder. He's quite far ahead in experience, but that also means if he fucks up and I kill him, I'll get a shitload of XP back, so... That's nice. The nice thing about uh, Proto Belt is that you can Proto Belt into a Q like that, with the Empowered Q, and, um... So Gragas is unique in this case, but, uh, for a lot of champs, this type of trade for Vladimir looks really bad, right? You're like, holy fuck, you lost so much HP. But actually, Vladimir, um, wins most of those trades if you, against champions that don't have sustain. And even if the champion that has sustain, like, almost nothing can out-sustain Vladimir. As you can see, I'm almost full HP again, and I froze for, like, 15 seconds. Wait, why did I pull? What the fuck? He's in that bush still, I'm like 90% sure. Or he's TP'd mid. He could have recalled, but it doesn't matter anyway. He base TP'd. I had to check his items to know for sure, but as soon as I saw his items, I know he base TP'd. So I know for a fact he did, because he upgraded his items. So yeah, I was freezing the wave whilst he base TP's, but even if I had pull, he would have fucked me up there, so not really a fight I wanted to take. Mm-mm. I'll do the base check me there, actually. I'll cancel my base and walk away. I don't want to get the uh, trap. I actually want to stay for more farm or just sort boots in general, because those are my next spikes. Gragas is no flash, so I could even fight top lane here. I mean, 
I can fight that if we can move from mid. What you do is um you just queue the wave like this and freeze it when there's like one or two range creeps and then you can just keep spamming Q and sustaining. There's no golems for me to do the trick, so I'll do this instead. The oh, fuck? I kinda creep decided no I don't want to, and then yes I want to. So that's the idea. You put about forward and just queue them. Uh the empowered Q damage. Whilst nice is not the main value of the trick there, it's the healing you get. You get so much more healing off he queuing a champion than you do off queuing a thingy. Vladimir teaches you about uh, the... Not trading in health numbers, but in health percentages. So if you're playing in Vlad and you're like, I can't kill him, he's too OP, blah, blah, blah. Uh, look at it this way. When you trade with Vladimir, you shouldn't be looking at his health as a, as a flat number. You should be thinking of it as a percentage, basically. That's going to help you a lot with uh, finding a way to actually beat him. I'm just going to prod about forward here for this. I don't think I necessarily lose this, so I'm down. And then when you get strong enough, you just kill them. Don't look at the number, because the amount of uh, health that Vladimir goes through in a laning phase is like two or three times that amount of a normal champ. Maybe even five times if the laning phase is long enough. So don't look at Vlad as a like, oh yeah, like I, I've got him, I traded 400 health for 200 of mine, that's a good trade, because well, I technically over the course of a 10 minute laning phase have 10,000 health. You should be thinking of like, once I get him to 40%, I can one shot him. Therefore, putting him at 40% is a winning trade. I might die here if I take this tower, but it does get me my death cap, I think. Ah, I'm 100 gold off. This champ is broken. Yeah, like I said, if you don't employ the strategies that I just explained, yes, he is. <laughs> and this guy has just been pushing waves brainlessly until he thought he won, and then now he loses because, well, he's waited too long. I got all my levels. Isn't it better to go Ghost Lash? Uh, Airy plus Ignite, uh, Ghost is for lane pressure, so the other one's for scaling. I tried to play it to win lane, but I realized very quickly I can't do that in this matchup. It's better for to go Ghost Lash if you're scaling, yeah. They do do two different things, so you just have to acknowledge that they do do two different things, and that's all, you know? Is a better top counter pick than mid pick? Yes, I agree. I think Vladimir is scarier as a top counter pick than a blind pick or like a, a general mid laner. I think he he definitely is in his best role as a top lane counter pick. That said, there's not many matchups right now that he's a great counter pick into. He's decent, just nothing is like... There's no reason to pick him over champions uh, over other counter picks is what I'm saying for most times. Nice, well played. I don't really hold the position. I, I'm more of a flanking champ. He also goes bot lane, I'll run top, I don't mind. I just wanted to hover for the third Drake, because it's a pretty big one. Ash is running straight bot, so I guess I'll just take this wave and hover. You know, I want to take her farm, but if she's volunteering to go bot lane, then... Works for me. Oh, I have so much AP already, what the fuck? My champ's broken. But yeah, uh, once you get to a certain point though, this champion does obscene amounts of damage against everyone, and it's like, not even funny. No doubt about that. Yeah, but he's done that for a very long time, to be fair, so there's that. Well, they're opening both, so I guess I'll just stay mid and keep pressuring. Are we basing or are we gaming? Hmm. Okay, Jesus. Uh, how do I trade one for one here? I don't. The TP is too rough. I didn't anticipate it. I don't have someone who's supposed to play there and I have to use my pull too early. Maybe I could have let him, like, knock me into them. That could have worked. But in general, if I get body like, if I get flanked like that, my champ is, like, pretty immobile without the phase rush. I'll sell my boots for, or sell my Dark Seal for boots. I think it's pretty important. Actually, how much AP do I get? It's actually more than I thought. Is that 24 AP really? Holy fuck. That's broken actually. What the fuck? What? That's 24 AP? Dude, I'm keeping my 24 AP. I guess the death cap is just 2 OP. 40%? A lot of AP? 
Cannon, yeah. Cannon used to be a good matchup. For Vlad that he got picked in. You can go Vlad versus Jax instead of Jace. You can play it, but it's not like... It's not a smooth ride, let's put it that way. You can definitely get your head caved in if you don't... If you're, if you're not careful. I wouldn't say it's a bad matchup. I actually think it's like a good matchup. It's just you need to acknowledge that things can go wrong and you'll need time to scale back up if that happens and you'll need something good to happen. Like if you get a shutdown, you're back. But uh, Vladimir with Ignite and Aerie can definitely match. Like, he's actually a stronger champion than Jace's early game. Damn. I wanted to practice last hitting the cannon there. Uh, Blood with Aerie and Ignite, like I'm playing it, Ghost Ignite Aerie is a stronger champ than Jace's early game, 100%. Uh, Conqueror and Jace might be, like, mm, close in terms of power, but I'd still say this one is stronger. Uh, Pool is just too, too versatile as an aggressive tool to, like, for it not to be this way. You always want to EQ, um, because your empowered Q heals off missing health, so technically it's better. I, mean, I don't know, how do we secure it? Need a kick or something, no? Uh, I'm just gonna burst this. I don't want to overburst it, so it's a good thing I didn't overkill it. Damn, I didn't live. I should have released my E earlier and I would have lived. E sucks your health as you channel it. So uh, you can release it earlier to deal more damage and also take less... Other than that, I'm happy with how I played that fight. It wasn't anything special, but it wasn't too bad either. Oh, uh. Blood completely shits on Jax on top. I disagree. I think Jax has one those to fight you. I also think if Jax can just play Hail of Blaze in that matchup, for example, and play more for the early like fights and stuff instead of... Uh... We literally just lost to a tier 3 tower, by the way. My challenger teammates died to a tier 3 tower. Unironically. I mean, it's fine, you know? Like, I think we still win, but still. A bit awkward, for sure. But, uh, yeah. Just because people just always meet the status quo doesn't mean they can't also improve their builds. Like, you could say, like, yeah, if you play Ghost Ignite, Blood, Blood shits on Jax, but what if Jax plays Ignite with Halo Blades? Does not change anything? And, like, you start thinking, you know, like, hmm, maybe you're right, you know? It's a better way of looking at the game. Then just... I needed this one ult there to go a bit harder and I would have loved to. Ah, uh, I ulted, but a bit of a waste, honestly. I shouldn't have W'd there, this play. Bo blocking the body slam here so he can't run. <clears throat> I needed a minion to queue off of and I would've lived there. Blues. Then I could've W'd, but I didn't get the healing. Empiros, thank you for the sub, I appreciate that. Welcome. Bosnian Rattler as well, thank you as well. Ride them down like dogs? Yeah, that's what he does after a certain point. Especially when you have an enchanter like Sona. Um, enchanters with Vlad, like, Vlad doesn't scale with any other stats than movement, speed, ability, haste, and AP. So like, Staff of Flowing Water enchanters are actually pretty good with him. Especially when they have Shrelia. You go kind of crazy. Ba -ba -ba. The fun part for Vlad? Yep, Rada's still good on Vlad. It's never really been his best item. It's never been something that's worth building over raw damage on him. So no, I would say it's not good on Vladimir. You shouldn't build it. There's way better items. Don't waste your money on Rada's. Uh, invest, if you want something that's more like kiting and like fighting long fights, play Cosmic Drive instead. It's just better. I'm gonna split push here. Uh, I think I'm a bit of a menace right now if I go on the sideline, so that's what I'm gonna do. What do you say the main difference between high diamond master versus high gem challenger player? There is no main difference. They're just better at everything you do. <laughs> like, the main difference is everything you do, you're worse at than them. You have the right idea as a master tier player, you're just not as good, not as consistent. That's my opinion. Like, for example, when I look at the, my girlfriend play, she's master tier. Um, 
she has the right ideas she just doesn't have the consistency to pull them off all the time right and that's just one example like obviously i've got like I've, she's, we've been together for five years and i've worked with her a lot to make sure that our, that her understanding of the game is right you know like she does the right things and she's smart about the game i felt that timing hey let me have some fun too motherfuckers all right my turn bitches up goes the weasel all right well we'll take it Anyway, you do that with pulled into the enemy team, and then you just win the game. Like, you do that one more time, so you, you go in like that, and then you you do E pull, because you can E and then pull, and then yeah, everyone dies. And you win the game, because you're Vladimir. But anyway, my team carried me this game. What I did didn't matter. Runan's still a terrible item on Mage. Okay, cool. Night Harvester versus Rocket Belt. Uh, I just think Rocket Belt is just much better, but I'm not an expert, so take that, you know? You know, just the way it is. Time to climb XDD. Oh, I should have given Tilt Proof. Cherry GFO PGG. Why would I? And she's not mastered here right now. She's decayed, so. Either way, like. If you're in lobbies where you're playing in D1 slash uh D1 slash Master tier, I consider it to be master tier, you know, like there, there's no difference. The difference is what your profile says. If you queue into master lobbies, then you're a master tier player. Uh, assuming that you don't get shit on immediately as soon as you get there, I guess. True. Differences between D2 and Master. Same thing, brother. Are you listening? Do you have sound on? Just making sure, you know? Shockingly, the difference between D2 and Master and Master and Challenger is just that they're worse. Once you look at like low elos, like below diamond, you can say like, yeah, this elo doesn't farm well, for example. Absolutely, I think you can say that. But like, if you look at a diamond two lobby, do you really, is it really that all the diamond two players cannot farm to save their lives? No, they farm fine. They're just not good at it, like great at it, right? That's, that's my point. That's the difference. You're just slightly worse than the better players. You're okay, just a little worse. <laughs> 